and we'll take a look at the music player and we'll go to artists got a couple things on here the new secret machines record so this is my fault for not having cover art on there um, but while it's playing you can scan it's pretty responsive obviously all the controls you can shut the phone it'll continue to play on the outside You can also multitask, so I could go back and uh, we'll launch up the web browser here. So I was looking at Twitter before. And we'll go to uh, we'll load up the NY Times page here. Whoops. And so I'm connected right now, I'll turn this down a little bit. I'm connected right now over Wi-Fi. So here's the New York Times page loading up. And you can hear the music still playing, so it is a little bit of multitasking. So here's the uh, mobile version of the Times page. So it's a full HTML browser um, that obviously defaults to, you know, the mobile version because more websites are getting smarter about detecting if you're looking at a, uh, if you're looking at the page from a mobile browser or a computer or what. Um, you can zoom in. There's the clock I was talking about. So that'll happen sometimes when you're, uh, when you're asking the processor to do something. Uh, we'll zoom back out. We'll take you to a... Uh... Oh, I spilled my drink. Oh, dear. Let's move over a little bit. We'll take you... <laughs> it's craziness tonight at Phone Dog West, let me tell you. We'll take you to the Phone Dog page. Because that's a, a relatively complex page. Some JavaScript going on, some other things. And we'll show you. It loads up really quick on the Wi-Fi. Um, starts loading the data. But then it's got to render out the page before it can display. And you can see it's taking a little while there. And so here's the page, and it's pretty, you know, it's pretty small, obviously. Uh, it's showing the whole thing. Still loading up. And it's loading the images, so it can take a little while. Look at all that stuff on Phone Dog you can go check out. <laughs> anyway, so there you can see with a more complex page, it's going to take it a minute. Even though it's got the Wi Fi and the data is going quickly. Uh, the actual, you know, the computer inside the phone trying to do its thing. So we'll go one more here. We'll check out... So we'll check out Facebook real quick. And there's the mobile mobile version loads up. So I think in general, and uh, we'll go to the application switcher to turn the music off. 
as I say this. I think in general, if you're not trying to push the phone, you know, if you want, if you want the phone, the BlackBerry that can do everything, you know, you're going to want the bold or the curve. Uh, with a phone like this, you know, if you know its limits and you know that it's not going to handle all of the HTML websites out there, you know, as well as a, a computer or, you know, a super high-end Windows mobile phone or something. But, you know, you want to be able to get to see some of the HTML in addition to all the websites. You want to be able to do it while you're listening to music in the background, that kind of thing. You'll probably be pretty happy with the phone. Again, the push email is just fantastic, works very well. As you can see, it's got Wi-Fi and the UMA for T-Mobile's hotspot at home calling. So you can save a little money if you make a lot of calls or, you know, where you're in range of Wi-Fi and also the connectivity is great. The sound quality for me in testing the phone has been very good. Haven't had any problems both on regular GSM and also on the UMA. Um, you know, what else can I tell you? If you're looking for a BlackBerry, but you want something that's a little smaller, a little more stylish, uh, the Flip, it's definitely worth checking out. It's not, my first impression was, wow, this thing's big. And it is kind of large. But, um, it's very lightweight. It doesn't feel flimsy. It feels solid, but it's very lightweight. And, um, that makes it, you know, seem a little less like a beast. You know, it's more just like, Oh yeah, it's a flip, and it's big, and there's a lot of room and everything, but it's it's lightweight, so it's not that bad. Also, another thing to point out is that um, the micro SD card is accessible from the outside while you're using the phone. It's hot swappable, which is nice. Older Blackberries didn't have that. Um, it's a micro USB port for charging as well, which, uh, you know, a lot of the phones now these days are... are are using that. The Lotus actually, just because I have it here, the Lotus also has a micro USB port, so I was able to use the chargers interchangeably, which I know you're maybe not supposed to do, but in a pinch, you know. So it's not as convenient as mini USB, but uh, standardization is nice. And uh, hey, look at that. It's the press release for the uh, T-Mobile Flip just came in. There you go. It's official now. It's the BlackBerry Flip 8220. It's the review. You know, I'm giving it a thumbs up. Again, if you're a super high power BlackBerry user and you want everything lickety split, uh, wait for the bold or check out the uh, Curve 2, which there's rumors flying around that it's going to come to T-Mobile soon if you're a T-Mobile user, or just check out the current Curve. But if you want the OS 4.6, the Flip's got it. And again, if you're using it for email, music, camera, and, uh, you know, web stuff that's not like you're not trying to, you know, really hammer on it. Uh, you'll be pretty happy with it. Uh, you can watch the occasional video, that kind of thing. So there you go. BlackBerry Pearl Flip 8220. Much, much more on this on PhoneDog.com. Be sure to check out our Facebook and our Twitter streams. And uh, I'll see you next time. I'm Noah. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.